Most people think that sampling and triggering samples started in the last like 10 to 15 years, but we were sampling and triggering snares way back in like 1986 when the Synclavier first came out. And back then the triggers weren't fast enough uh, and you would hear a delay. So at that time we would actually flip the tape over, print the snare on another track and then run it through the sync head and then delay it uh, back and then get it in sync. We'd have we'd adjust the delay until it got right until it was in sync with the original snare and then we'd layer that snare in with the original snare. It was quite complicated. It took a long time to figure out the best way to sample. And guys were even using harmonizers. They would, they would capture a snare and a har harmonizer and uh, trigger it from uh, tape. <clears throat> and uh, it, was, it was quite cumbersome trying to do a sample in 1986. But then in the 90s, in the 90s, we were able to um, trigger snares and create MIDI notes into a sequencer. And then we could adjust the MIDI notes and move it forward or backward and get it in sync with um, the snare in a mix. You could actually sit there and adjust it with simpty time code and move it around until it locked in. But you had to use your ear. And you, had, you couldn't sit there and analyze where the sample was in relations. You actually had to use your ears and make sure it was locked in. Now, it probably wasn't perfectly phase locked all the time, but you know, if you were just layering a snare with another snare, you could probably get away, away with it, especially if you were just using it for ambience. Um, but it, it was difficult. And, and then eventually um, the program Sound Replacer came out once, once we started using Pro Tools. And then we could visually adjust the snares or kicks, whatever, or toms, whatever we're replacing and visually adjust them and, and sync them perfectly with the the original sounds.